Uh, my name is Matt Goldman. I grew up mostly in Minnesota, uh, although I did live in Beloit, Wisconsin for a few years when I was very young, and I went to the university here for one year and then transferred back to Minnesota, and I will say right now it was a mistake. Uh, my parents moved away, and my little brothers moved away from Minneapolis my freshman year, and I felt I had to still, it's a long story, but still a mistake. So, But I'm very happy to be back here. Uh, um, I, uh, w I thought I was going to be a doctor. Um, my junior year of college, some friends asked me if I wanted to go see stand-up comedy, which I had never seen before, uh, perform live. And I went, and for some reason I thought I should be doing that. <laughs> so I had to make that call to my parents. And, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, but I, 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 fell in love with the writing part of stand-up. It went well for me, but I did not enjoy being on stage. Um, but I continued to do it, and that with a, a lot of encouragement from national acts who came through Minneapolis, who I opened for, they said, you should move to LA and be a writer. And so I got in my dented up Ford Escort and did. And uh, my, my writing career really started on Seinfeld. And, and then I wrote a lot of comedy and some drama. And, uh, and then in 2015, I started writing my first book, uh, Gone to Dust. And uh, the second one's Broken Ice, which is right there. And in six weeks, the third one, called The Shallows, will be out. And there's a fourth one that I just finished the first draft of that'll be out in 2020. <laughs> So uh, the question I get most often is how I went from writing TV comedy to writing uh, murder mysteries. And, and the answer is if you're as introverted as I am and you spend 25 years in rooms full of writers pitching jokes at you all day, murder comes to mind. <laughs> um, I spent a lot of time in, in TV writer's room. I lived in Los Angeles a long time. I, I don't live there anymore. Uh, but I liked writing TV comedy because I found it very human. Because uh, it's, it's about our faults and those traits we have that fill us with shame. And I think that's a very human thing. And, but s about 17 years or so ago, th things changed in television, uh, specifically with the dramas. And it, the thing that changed is they got very good. Shows like The Wire and The Sopranos and Breaking Bad and The Closer, even on network TV shows like The Good Wife. There's a very long list of shows from all over the world that are excellent that many of us stream now. And it changed the dynamics in Hollywood in, in a significant way. It used to always be that the prestige medium to work in was film. And everybody wanted to work in film. And if you couldn't work in film, then you'd go work in television. And, but it, it changed when those shows came out. All of a sudden, writers, directors, actors, producers, were directors of photography, were all wanting to move from film to television because that's where the best character work was being done. The, the uh, financial dynamics of film kind of made it like they make big superhero movies because they can sell those all over the world and then there's little independent movies that no one makes any money on but the the solid character work like the terms of endearment those kind of movies basically disappeared and so that work went to television and the TV dramas got great and in, and they were on the covers of magazines and it's all people talked about and, and in Hollywood, TV became cool. Like that was the cool thing you wanted to work on. That was the thing everybody aspired to do. And, and then the comedy people, the, the executives at the networks and studios thought, well, we want to make comedy cool. And, and, and so they did that and, I, and it ruined comedy for me because comedy's not cool. You know, the great comedic, Characters in television like Ralph Cramden was not cool, and Lucy Ricardo was not cool, and George Costanza definitely not cool, and you know, like Fraser Crane is an idiot, and his brother Niles is even more of an idiot. Like, there, it's really about our faults. You know, one thing I talk about with Seinfeld is the, the one of my favorite episodes um, was George had this really great date with a woman, and then 
he wanted to ask her out for a second date. So he called and left a message on her machine and she didn't call him back. And so he called and left another message. He left a series of messages that were increasingly pathetic and desperate. And, and, and so then he found out, well, she was out of town and she didn't pick up her message. She didn't know about the messages, but now he's hugely embarrassed that she's going to hear those. So he and Jerry stake out her apartment and wait for her to get back and then make this plan that they'll walk into her apartment with her and one of them will distract her while the other one steals the tape out of the answering machine. So we've, the human part of that is we've all sent a letter or email or text or left a voice message that we regret. We've all done that. On that show, you know, if George was an evolved human being, he would just say, hey, I did this really stupid thing, I didn't know you, but he doesn't do that. He comes up with this hilarious plan. And, and so we all feel those things, but in that show, they, they acted on it, and that's what made it funny. But that stuff started to go away in comedy, and I thought, well, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that anymore. Uh, I, will, I will work in drama instead, because that's what I watch. And to research drama, I started reading crime fiction for the first time. I, I've always been a big reader, but literary fiction was what I loved. And I was kind of a snob about it, too. And I was writing sitcoms. I had no business uh, being a snob. But, uh, <laughs> but when I read crime fiction, I absolutely fell in love with it. And, and the reason is because, and I found it very counterintuitive and surprising, when, when you have a crime and a, and a mystery at the center of your story, it kind of pushes the story along. It has to move forward and it frees up, it frees up space for your characters to just be people. They don't have to carry the whole weight of the story because, hey, there's a dead body and then there's clues come along. And so even though they're proactive in the story, um, they, they, you can get into their lives a little bit, into their relationships, into what makes them tick. And so after reading a bunch of it, I just sat down and started writing Gone to Dust. And I'll just explain that the, the reason that this symbolizes dust, the dessert, is because in the first book, um, a woman is, is found murdered in her home and her body and most of the crime scene are covered in the dust and dirt from hundreds of vacuum cleaner bags. And there's so much forensic evidence in that, you know, there's there's people's DNA and there's fiber and there's hair and all sorts of, that, that forensically it makes the crime a really difficult to solve. So uh, this little suburban police department that has not seen uh, a murder in a long time hires uh, uh, a consultant, which is my private detective, Neil Shapiro. So that's where the dust comes in from. And then Broken Ice came out last year and The Shallows will be out in, in six weeks about, June 4th. That's my story. Thank you.